afternoon fret friends we have a guitar on the bench new client new guitar and uh, this is uh, one of those their uh, Fender player series I believe and um, he loves it it's his first proper Fender he says he's not much of a player but it's his first proper Fender it is a Fender 75 so it was 75th anniversary type of affair fabulous looking guitar decent weight to it what's wrong with it well these fret ends are really sharp not really sharp but they're a bit sharp and that is not very good uh, a bit surprised by that so he says can you give it a setup and let me know if it needs any of if, if it needs anything else doing just do it so they are a little bit sharp right on the ends now what am i going to do about that because if i start carving into these fret ends here we're going to start hitting the lacquer and uh, unfortunately that's what we're going to do so so be it it's what i am going to do so i'm going to set the guitar up i'm going to check the frets uh, see if we're any higher ones or not and if not i'm going to work out a way uh, work out what I'm going to charge him because I haven't got a set price for doing these edges so I might do it based on time it may cost me an hour or one of you it's going to have a set up anyway uh, if it wants some fret work doing we'll sort of tie it in uh, I think at the most we're going to be looking at is if we don't fret level I'll just chuck them edges in for nothing but uh, yeah look not too short but certainly not as nice as they ought to be I reckon if we just roll over these corners here they're going to feel a lot better so i may just give a re a complete reprofile of the frets i don't know yet i've not plugged it in i've not played it you know as much about this as i do just about standard fender tuners on back of there made in mexico mexico on the back lovely looking guitar don't get me wrong um i'm sure the pickups will be nice as well i love this it's color white very nice uh, i do believe I'm not sure if that's a bone or not. It feels like it could be bone, but it's probably going to be that cyclovac stuff that Fender tend to use. So uh, they sprayed over the nut as they always do. Makes them a bind if they need to come out. But we certainly won't be changing that out. You don't need to change that. It's like that, it's like Graftec or one of you. So very very nice looking guitar. I'm going to go and stick it in the other room in a minute. I'm going to look and play on it. See what I think of the pickups. Check the electrics. It's uh, just standard electrics, three way. I do believe the owner has swapped this out and puts either these saddles in or has just swapped the whole lot out. Um, I'm not sure how these come. He said something about that anyway. That certainly looks much better. I would have liked to have seen some compensated saddles in there, like the uh, Wilkinson ones. I, I would have recommended a Wilkinson bridge on this. They're only about 23 quid. I've got one of my um, Classic Vibe and it's fantastic. And they are compensated saddles so you don't get no intonation problems. I find with these, Intonation doesn't always set right. Let's have a quick look. There may be, well, there may be compensated on the saddles themselves. A little ridge on one side, off it's kind of offset. So they may already be compensated. So they should be okay. Thinking about it. But anyway, let me go and have a little tinkle next door, and um, I'll come back and let you know what I think. How does it play? Well, it plays horrible. But there's a reason for that. Two reasons actually. One, setup's not very good, and two. It's got eights on it. My Telecaster has 11s on it. And I tuned down off a step. So these are really weedy strings for me. It's not set up right anyway. The uh, radius is not right on the bridge. So all the strings are a little bit too flat, but it makes the right noises. So that is a good thing. There's no scratching or anything on the parts, which there shouldn't be. Um, so all in all, nice guitar, but it does need work on the frets. I think the frets are gonna need rolling over on the edges rather than just doing a complete fret level i've been over with fret rocker there were three high frets that i could see but don't forget the neck is not dead straight so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the strings off quickly quickly loosen them like this as you do and these go straight in the bin 838 not here mate crikey me there's 11s on it there's some proper strings on it so we are going to, we're not going to get to work straight away, I'm just going to get the strings off. All we're going to do is we're going to check the frets because this is not being done today. I've got another, I've got two other guitars I'm working on at the moment. So let's just stick that there so you can see what's what. And we'll loosen them strings and I will not be saving these. We'll go straight in the bin. 838, get out of here. Not for, not for me, not for Victor. Crikey me. We're going to cut in cheese. So Ernie Balls they are. He has set, sent some sets of uh, Ernie Ball 942s which will be going on it so that's 
least we're getting nearer the ballpark there, aren't we? So some nines on there. But this will play like a bottle once I've done with it. But obviously we need to get them frets done without scuffing into the lacquer on the neck because it's a thin. So there's a thin lacquer on there. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, I'm just chuntering away while I um, get these strings off. And all I'm going to, the reason I've took these strings off too sweet is I just want to check the frets. See how many need work, and then it'll give you an idea of how much we're going to price this guitar at. Shouldn't need a fret level, but I said that about many guitars, and I've been wrong. So let's just have a quick look. 25 and a half scale length. This should be probably a little bit of back bow in that now. There is a little bit of back bow in there now. So I believe. Let me try and remember it. Is it a 3 16 nut on there? Or a 5 16 5 16 out of wrench. Let's have a look. 3 16 seems big, but you know, give it a go. And it is a 3 16 Wow. Look how fat that is. Big fat Allen wrench on there. 3 16 for the uh, Mexican ones. So that should be about straight. One way truss run on these. Had a bit of relief in there, so we're just going to slacken off a little bit more. I said, That is it, that is slackened off, and that's how our neck should be. It should be straight with a truss rod loose, that's how they ought to be. Mm, no, too much relief in there now. So, we're going to give this maybe a quarter turn, about there should be it. There you go, just a, just a smidgen, that should be it. Put a sixteenth of a turn on top of that quarter there. And I would say, there you go, and that is a straight neck. So now we can go and check, oh, did old trim there. Now we can go and check the frets. And armed with my trusty GMI. Fret rocker, check his frets. So far, so good. That's good. Normally, number two's clacking a bit there. So, I've got one. I'll tell you what, that's good though. Two. Three. Same one, four, five, so we've got five high spots, that is not a lot, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, I'm going to sort those five frets out, I'm going to round over these edges as well, it's going to take me a bit of time, so I'm going to charge him, including this setup, I'm going to charge him £100 for all of the work, I'm going to roll over and sand these frets as well, once I've leveled the five that need doing. So we'll do that, we'll do a complete setup, we'll set all this correct, we'll recut the nut slots, reshape the nut, get all the frets sorted out, roll over these edges, get all these nice and smooth. Well, a little bit of sharpness here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get rid of that totally. We'll see what rolling over the edges does, but that's not really good. That, but I mean, they're not cutting, but just not quite right. You can hear it there. So, yeah, so I'm going to do this for £100, all done, and uh, I'm going to let the client know, and I'll drop back on this one in a day or two. So, take the top fingerboard, and we're going to get to work on these beveled edges. Now, I'm still going to need to be going along the old edge without tape on there, but the reason I put tape on now is I'm going to be doing just rolling over ever so slightly these beveled edges, see if that makes a difference, because these feel really, really sharp. So it's just a matter of just three, four, five strokes, nice and gentle with the fret edges like this. Now this file, it's two cutting sides, that side, that side, 
but the top edge and the bottom edge are safe edges so you're not going to cut into anything I'm just going to take my time with these just to soften those edges there time nice and gentle it's not a sprint now when I get to the body area of the guitar I'm going to be a little bit more careful I'm not able to go at the angle going out on these ones that are clear so what I'm going to do there is something slightly different. And you always want to be working far side. So when I do this side, I'll turn the guitar around 180 degrees. I'm just going to do this side now just to show you guys how it works. When I get to the last three, I'm just going to grab some blue tape and a piece of leather, chamois leather. Just one layer is fine. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape this into there, like so. And when it comes to the last frame, I'm just going to take my time because I can't go at that angle anymore. I've got to go at this angle. So I'm just going to go really gently. And you can't really see what I'm doing there because my hand's in the way. But I'm just going really gently. Not digging into anything. So that's all done. I've just got these four to do at this end. And we'll get a better idea. Once I've done that, I'm going to grab some old 600 grit paper and I'm just going to bring this to my body so I can hold the guitar steady. I'm just going to roll over these fret edges with some old 600 grit, like so. And this is going to soften those edges. So you see how this works. When it comes to these, just going to be 
careful again and just do it with your hands just over the edges and that's as much as you can do up there So that has softened all those edges. We've rolled over with some sandpaper. And I'm going to highly polish these a little bit later with some grits of sandpaper. I'll use six grits as is normal, but I still have a few to level yet. So I'm going to find out which ones need leveling after I've done the other side. I'm going to do the other side off camera. I'll bring you back in, we'll find out which ones need levelling, then I'll get set up, I'll get them levelled, get them recrowned, and then I'll polish the lot. So I've done the bevelled edges on both sides, turn the guitar back round, I marked off the frets where there are high spots, and there are more than I thought there was, so really in hindsight maybe I should have done a complete fret level, but I've already priced the guy up now, so I'm just going to mark off the high spots on the frets. That's one fret, two, three, four, five, six, this one's seven. So I'm going to just knock a couple in just to see if they reseat because that can help sometimes. Failing that. Let me just go get my fretting hammer, I left it in the other room. Working on a base in there yesterday. So, my fretting hammer, and I'm just going to gently tap these frets where they mark. So you'll see the guitar is supported. We've got some chamois leather, four thicknesses of chamois leather under there. I'm just going to see if that has made a difference because sometimes you just need tapping in a little bit. How's that one did? Just right on this edge now is a high spot. Still high. But the rest of it, the other side is now still high up. So we are going to file that fret. So let's check exactly where we're high again. And I'm going to be spot levelling. Instead of levelling them all that way, I'm going to spot level that way. So I'm going to take my trusty Swiss file. Number four, cut this one. Super smooth, super sharp. It's a great file. I love this thing. And it's just a matter of filing, following the radius, and this side, following the radius. It'll be, you'll, you'll learn how to radius these, you'll just follow, be able to follow it and just check in your progress and that has done that side and that has done this side so we check one back and one forward and now we know we're there and then what I'm going to do is with this this is just a regular file, it's just a smooth number 4 cut this one is a diamond file, Stubach diamond file and it's got the perfect crown shape so we're just going to whiz over the top of the frets just to round it over and that one is leveled and crowned check again check back check forwards there you go we're now going to check this one so again we're just going to tap in and that seems to have done the trick happy with that one, check back one, check forward one, so that one just needed tapping in. We'll do the same with this one. So it's like that one needs tapping in on the edge. We'll check these again before I go to final polishing because they could unseat over time. But those two are now fine. The same, just in the middle, that's high. But we always check 
that's fine now check the last one this is uh, again look that's now high again check this one that one's fine so knocking that one in has knocked that one out slightly so we'll just give it another tap so far so good Sometimes I just need knocking back in. So those three are now seated, they don't need filing. We're going to leave those marked up, we're going to come back and check those in a short while. So let's move the support. Got this whole fret is saying high now. So you're using my nylon side. Just high on this side now. Still high on this side. So we are going to take the file to it. And let's clean the file between frets just on this edge here. So just following the radius. So a little bit high on the edge. Oh my no, god. So heating it again with the profiling file, just give it a quick wipe. Again, final time. It's now high on that far edge, so even though I've knocked it in, it's forcing itself back out a little again. And check the last three from before. And that's now high on that side. So I'm going to do this one. Same again, just a little. It's always worth tapping them in, see if you'll seat properly. Give the file a wipe. Now, all now nah, saying good. That's high on the far side now, so it has come seated slightly again doesn't hurt to keep rechecking check many times before you're happy but that one's fine now so one last time check that's very good back to these that's still high on that far edge Wipe the file. It's now good. Okay, so we're now saying good. So I mean, you've got to keep going backwards and for forwards with these. Knocking them in sometimes doesn't. We don't hold them. We just spring back to where they were before. So just keep checking. I'll check this one. Okay, we're going to knock that one in now. We don't need a support under the neck for this one because it's a body fret. This one here. Same with this one. Let's see what these are saying now. This one's now saying level. Check forwards one. And back one that's fine and this one is now saying 
level. Check back one, that's saying hi. Check forward one. So we're just going to tap this one. Give us a couple of minutes. Oh, that one's saying hi still. Ever so, ever so slightly. This one is saying level. So we're just going to hit this one with, with the file. Now saying level. Back to that one. Just check this one again before I finish. Okay, it's all good. Clean the file. Over the top. And that should be done. And that's good. That's good. So it looks like everything is now level. With all of this, and that's it. So we've got the frets leveled. So now we have scuffed over a couple with the um, file, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to still polish the lot anyway. That's why I'm charging 100 pounds because I'm going to give it the full fret polish because I've actually gone over all of these beveled edges. Now, all being well, when we take the tape off. It would have been these beveled edges that were causing the sharpness, not the bottom of the edges in the side of the neck. If it is, we're going to, have to go over the side of the neck with some uh, micro cloth or micro pads, which I'm already expecting to do anyway. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be polishing all of the frets. Six grits of paper. 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. I'm going to start with the coarse grit, finish with the fine grit. This is going to bring out any scratches we've got in there. The frets did need a polish anyway by the looks of them. They weren't that... They're not very well finished frets to be honest with you. They are certainly not American uh, quality. So maybe this is one, one of the ways again they, um, they save money. But it's what they do isn't it? So uh, just bear with me a second. I've got some new gloves. Those blue gloves I was wearing were massive for a large. So I had to go and get some more. Now my tattooist, Armel, she's Belgian. But she uses these, and they are my uni gloves. And I asked her what size she used, and she says large. I thought, well, your hands aren't that large. She was never quite tight for large, so I bought myself some. And I'm going to, have to do what I always do for polishing, and that is to remove the little finger end and the third finger and the thumb. And that way, just my two polishing fingers are exposed. And I don't get my fingers all capped up. And look at that. You get how it works? How's that? Very good. Look a little bit macabre, don't they? A little bit dark, a little bit, uh, little bit macabre. You know? A little bit League of Gentlemen. Anyway, let's crack on. So always have a uh, tea towel down, an old tea towel. I buy these in tens. I put seven in the kitchen. I take three for myself when I buy them. I love traditional stuff, and these are, you know, what I'm saying the older guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's see where we are. So, I'm going to polish the frets, and it's just that's the 600 we're starting with. You just take a piece, start on the corner, and we're just straight over the top of the frets like this. And I'm going to do it with all six grits of paper. And then we're going to finish off with steel wool. And this is going to bring the frets up really nice, scratch free, and highly polished. And this is going to take me a while, because it does take a while. So I'm going to crack on, do this off camera, and I will come back and I will show you the results a little bit later. Just finishing up on these frets, um, I'm polishing, I've got the last three to do with the uh, super fine steel wool. So we've gone through with six grits of paper. We've rounded over these beveled edges, gone through with six grits of paper, 600 through to 2000. And we're finishing off with super fine steel wool. For those who need to have a grade, it's grade zero, 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 four zeros. And this brings them up to a beautiful, beautiful shine. So we've leveled the frets. We've rolled over the bevels with a fine file. We've polished over those beveled edges and we've polished the frets to a deep, deep shine. 
look at that they look fantastic but we're going to hope and pray that when we remove the tape that these edges are no longer sharp the edges on the outside could still be sharp for all we know so just have a look and I'll let you know where we are we're going to peel the tape off right now I still think I want us to go over these with spot scotch bright pad but when the guy came in and says the edges were cutting his fingers I played it and I thought it was just they weren't beveled they were beveled too sharp but chances are I still need to sort those edges out but we'll see so now you'll see why I put a strip of tape on the length of the neck because it should help us peel it off easier. If an alarm goes off, don't panic because I've got an alarm due any time now to remind me to do something. Okay, so you can see this takes a bit of moving, this gear. And there you go. So, those fret edges are fine. I thought that was the case. It wasn't the fret edges, it was the bevels. I'm still going to go down there with a Scotch Bright pad a little bit later on. But look at those frets now, they are absolutely fabulous. Just a couple more. And that's because I, you see I put the blue tape over because we're using steel wool. These frets look wonderful. Okay, guys, we are. I'm going to fill down the side of the frets. Get rid of that rubbish. And that sharpness is all gone. That sharpness was the bevels, not the edge of the frets. So I've done the right thing there by re-beveling the fret edges. And I think it's the first time I've done that as a job on its own. I've never had to do that before I've had to um, skim over and just do these edges but they they feel beautiful now that's how they should have come out of the shop so we're not rolling over these beveled edges properly at the Fender Mexican factory um, you have a reason to complain about that but that is done now that feels fantastic so what I've got to do now is I've got to chuck some strings on here set it up and cut the knot slots and uh, this guitar will then be ready to rock. I'll show you a couple of other things we do uh, that sometimes doesn't make it to the video, and that is tightening the tuner heads. So I've noticed this one tightened up is a little bit loose, so we're going to come in and we're just going to slightly tighten the tensioner on the top there until we get it to the as tight as we look like it to be, and that is a lot better. These are all quite loose, so we're just going to give them a little turn. That's better. Always check these knots as well on the top. That's a lot better. There you go. Easily done. A few seconds there. Um, so I'll put the strings on. I get tuned to pitch. We're going to set the radius and everything on the uh, saddles a little bit later on. But we need to get everything all set up properly before we can cut the nut slots. Now cutting the nut slots is one of the last jobs we do want to set up. It's one of the last jobs I do want to set up. So like I said, I'm just going to dig some strings on here. A set of early ball 942s which the client's provided. And I think we're all right to strike a guitar, but you know, it's not going to hurt me leaving the camera on here for a few seconds, is it? 
this can be a bit of a bind to feed through sometimes. That one's gone through nice and uh, nice and easily. These bevel edges, by the way, if you don't need to do it on the edges, it was the actual bevels. They're so smooth now, beautiful. So that's really shoddy from the factory. Um, that's good. That would stop me definitely buying a Mexican strat. That's how they all come like that. There's no reason not to uh, roll over the beveled edges. That's just really bad. What's the, what's the point? You take your name off it. If you're doing work like that, I wouldn't want my name to be on any work like that. Oh, what are we doing here? Get it down there. I don't know what's gone off here. It's all gone stupid. Here you go. That's better. These are a lot tighter now. Probably won't wind or two too many on this one now, but. Anyhow, no such thing as too many wines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these strings on off camera and then I can take you through the setup from start to finish, can't I? So uh, see you in a little while. So I've not done this for a long time, so I'm going to take you through a setup. So I've put the strings on, that's all I've done. I've not got it in tune, I've not stretched them or anything, I've done nothing, I've not set the radius, I've not looked at the intonation, I've not cut the nut slots, I've not looked at the amount of relief in the neck. So what I'm going to do first, imagine I've just put the strings on, that's it. I've laid the guitar down, what we're going to do is now we're going to get close to pitch. So, oh, maybe jump. Do you get on camera? You know, when you had a stink string snap and it in the face. Should jump. Right, okay. So we are tuned it close to pitch there. Snip that then that string off, it's only one I hadn't done. So we're gonna try again. Let's pull them off, I don't need this glove on anymore. So we're close enough there, so what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at the amount of relief I've got in the neck. Because once I've got the right amount of relief, now we are now tuned to pitch. I've not stretched the strings in, I'm not going to stretch them in just yet. But with, being we're tuned to pitch, we can check the relief. Because I want the neck set in before anything else. Okay, that looks pretty okay. I'll be looking for a measurement of around a quarter of a millimetre or 0.25 of a millimetre, somewhere around about the sixth fret between the fifth and the seventh. So let me grab hold of a set of feeler gauge. See, the feeler gauge is right there, look. And there's a 25. And perhaps it's, we're going to scooch it under we're gonna have a quick look and that is a little bit high so we need to grab the right allen key i believe i've not unpacked my bag today they will be they're always a bit bad because i use them at home as well bear with me a second my sets of trusty steel allen keys my mcallister if you're a guitar tech you ain't got a set of these Get yourself 10 quid out of your wallet, nip down to Wix and get yourself a set of these. McAllister steel, superb quality. I bought these a good while ago, a good few years ago. So I need a 3 16th here because that is the size of a 
that you can push rod. And we're gonna tighten. So we're there, we're gonna give it an eighth of a turn. That's all. Put strings back. And you lock straight edge back on there. Eyeball it, that looks pretty good. Let's go back onto the sixth. And we've still got a little gap, so we're going to tighten just a little bit more. I'm not going to move strings that way this time. Just going to get on there. There you go. Give it another sixteenth of a turn. Pull the string out of the way so you can get your Allen key back out. Right, let me have a look. And there you go. We are now making contact. That is looking fabulous. So that is the amount of relief I want in the neck. Now what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the middle four strings. Don't worry about anything else yet. We're going to bring these up. Oh, I think I may have the right Allen key in here. No, maybe it's a bit too big. This is the fender, isn't it? Oh, that is the right one. We're going to bring these higher than we need to be, the four middle strings considerably higher than they need to be. Like so. Not bothered about the tuning, we're going to measure the two outside ones. That's the low E and the high E. Again, I've not got my tools out of the drawer, but they are just right there. So I'm going to measure the height of the string on the base side and on the treble side, so from the top of the fret to the to the bottom of the string. So on the base side I'm looking for just under two millimeters and we are we're only very slight we're a bit more under than I want to be but let's just give our little scoots there and that should be fine let's have a measure two millimeters there and on the treble side we are 1.5 millimeters. Well, I want I like to be a little bit nearer to 1.75 there because we're not cut with not swatch yet, so that should be about it. There we go, and we are 1.75. So I've over I've gone over on well, my finished setup. I'd like to be 1.75 mil on the base side, 1.5 mil on the treble, but I've gone quarter of a mil over each side. There's a reason for that. We're going to remove material from a knot later on, which is going to lower everything. So we're going to set this just a scooch high. So, bring it back to tuning, or close to tuning. Don't forget this is a setup from start to finish. Right, close enough. So, we've measured the two outside ones. I'm going to give them one more measure because we're tuning it back to pitch. We'll probably put a little bit more bend on that neck. Right, we're just over two on that side and just slightly over 1.75 that side. So, I again, I'm just going to scooch off quarter turn on each. Bring it out a little bit lower. Now what we're going to do is, we've got the right height at the 12th fret. We've got the guitar tuned to pitch. We're now going to set the radius at the bridge. And again, I've not got the tool out, so let's go and grab a nine and a half inch radius gauge, which will be this one, because it's a radius gauge and it says nine and a half on it. So what we're going to do now is, with the two outside ones already set and the four middle ones higher than we need to be, we're going to drop each of these middle ones, or each of these four, onto this piece of kit right here and if some are high some are low whatever we're going to change them so that looks to be pretty much bang on everything's looking pretty much bang on there so I'm just going to bring these up just a little because I played this and it was all over the place it was a mile out what we got there 
see where we are down here. And that's fantastic, we are set. That's exactly where we need to be. That is now. So we've got the 9.5 foot inch radius now matches the radius of a neck. So with the height set at the 12 fret and the radius set with the right amount of relief in the neck, we can now get on to the nut slots. What we're going to do first is just get quite close to tuning. I'm going to stretch these strings in before we do anything else. Now, I do know the guitar's laying down, so it's going to be sharper than it would be in the playing position. We always do final setup with the guitar in the playing position, so I'll be checking everything in the playing position before we finalise everything. Okay, so we're close to tuning. Let's recap what we've done so far. We bought the guitar to pitch. We didn't set the strings in, but we bought it to pitch. We set the amount of relief in the neck. Relief is the smiley shape that way. So we haven't got the neck dead straight. We've got a little curve going in the shape of a smiley, like that, of 0.25 millimeters at the sixth fret. Once that's set, we come and set the height of the two outside strings on the 12th fret. Just under 2 mil this side, just under 1.75 mil that side. Once the two outside ones are done, we raise the four middle ones and we set the radius on the four middle ones. We match the radius to the neck and we tune it back in. And now we're going to stretch the strings in. Stretching the strings in really easy. All you need to be doing is pressing down here and stretching your string. So once you press down there, just kind of stretch your string across its length or along its length, should I say. We will take some stretching. And once we've got it tuned to pitch, we'll always stretch. Or as much stretch as we can get into the strings, we're going to check everything else again. We're going to check the radius again. We're going to check, and we're certainly going to check the relief again. So we're getting a lot of stretch out of these strings. Don't forget, these are pulling on the neck now, about 60, 60 kilograms of pull. Third time. And that's it, we'll just about go off a stretch out of it. So on the next string, a few scooches behind the headstock, or on the headstock part, behind the knot. stretch a lot. I can't emphasize enough how important here it is to stretch your strings a lot. It's a very nice looking guitar. But it's no good looking nice and playing like a bag of spanners, is it? I'm very disappointed in Fender with those beveled edges. What are you paying good money for? There's no reason for guitar to be as expensive as they are, by the way. We've got away with it for so long. Don't go mad on these ones, because if you snap, they're going to hurt you. How do I know that? Just take it from me, I do. 
But this is the point of these crappy little string trees here. That needs to be put on a little cylinder underneath that because it was too low. It screwed right in, couldn't get a string inside it. Now these plain strings won't need as much stretching. Some wine strings that need more stretching. Don't go mental with these, because if one does snap on you next year, you're going to know about it. And so people about four blocks away. Especially with this high E one. Notice I'm not giving that a lot. How badly is that not caught? It's pinching in there a lot. It's not doing it now. Okay, strings are stretched in, so let's just get it tuned back to pitch. This is where we're going to set the intonation. Let's check the intonation, right, hang on, before I do that, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna check the height at the 12th fret, because it probably will be a little, be a bit, little, little bit higher now. So, no way. Yep, that's over two mil now. And the bit, bit treble side is still 1.75. So, we put some more bend in that neck just by tightening the strings. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna drop these again, and we're gonna reset the radius. That's because we tighten the strings, you see. So let's check where we are now. We're still over two mil on that side, that's too high. We are now two mil. Back into the tuner. So certainly you don't just set it once and leave it there, you set it and keep checking and set it and keep checking. So we're still too high on the base side. It's a good thing. I'm gonna drop the A string as well, gives a better reading. Right, we're just bang on two there, that's fine. Well, 175 on the treble side, so we'll drop that, I, do, I think I dropped it just a little anyway, and then we're gonna reset with the gauge. So get the gauge back under there, a nine and a half inch radius gauge, and we're gonna reset. Probably sometimes they don't fit right properly inside, but let's have a look, see where we are. That's still pretty much bang on. Just lower this one, lower this one, lower these two. There's a scooch there. And that's nice. So we've slightly lowered again. Just gonna check with my eye. Okay, I would like that to be I like the middle wants to be a little bit lower. Just a little. That one. Sometimes your eye is better than a measurer. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So back to pitch. And now we're going to set the intonation. So 
this is a question of balance. Is that a song by the Moody Blues? It was. Anyway, so this is not a two minute job. You can just get in there, whiz, 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 and get it done. You've got to keep checking, keep checking, keep tightening, and keep checking everything because there's only one way to do a setup, and that's to do it correctly or properly. So, have a look at the intonation. Now, the intonation. Again. Okay, that is a little bit lower than I want it because the string wasn't in the slot properly. So we're bring that up a scooch. But everything else, I've done it by eye, so it's fine. Now we're good. So now we're going to set the intonation. So what we need to do is we need to play the open string. And it needs to play the note. And we need to play 12 string harmonic. Then the fretted 12. That's fine. 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 Anyway, close is good on these double barreled saddles or twin saddles. So it looks like Luke has already set this himself and he's done a very, very, made a very good job of it because it's spot on. So with the strings at pitch, the next set I would like, I'm just going to measure again, we're just going to measure the amount of relief because it could have altered tightening the strings. But I think that's looking pretty much bang on. It's a little bit loose, so we're going to give it just another scooch. I'm a truss rod. Another sixteenth or thereabouts. Keep checking things. Then I'll do another measure. Too low on that side now. That's okay. We'll just alter things at this end again. I could do it by eye. You can do it by eye when you've got the experience I've got. But they're still looking high enough here, so I don't need to alter anything else. So just do it all by eye. You get a, an idea in your mind of how things ought to be. It's like I can look to Floyd Rose and tell you if the intonation's right or not, just by where the saddles are. And you should be able to do that. I will one day do this as a proper video. I don't want to set this yet because I need to screw this in a little bit more. I hate these little string pins because once you screw them down you can't get your strings underneath them. And you should be able to, in fact that's fine where it is. Let's check the B again. Okay, so let's recap. We set the amount of relief in the neck. We've tuned the guitar to pitch. We set the amount, sorry, we'll start again. We've set the guitar to pitch, tuning. Whatever tuning we're going to be in, just E standard, regular on this one. 
Then we look at the neck and we set the relief. Once we've set the relief in the neck, we look at setting the two outside strings. I like to go 1.75 on the bass side, 2 mil on the treble side before we cut the nut. Once we've got those heights on there on the two outside ones, we raise the four middle ones higher and drop them on the radius gauge to match the radius of the neck. Now whether it's a seven and a quarter or a nine and a half, you always set the radius on here to nine and a half. Um, it's something I've always done. I think Dan Elwine said that some, at some point. So that's what we do. So once we've set the neck, the two outer strings, then the radius, we bring it back to pitch, tune it in, and we then uh, we set we've set the radius. Once we set the radius, then we move on to the intonation. Once the intonation's done, we check everything again. We check the amount of relief. We check the height of the twelve fret. We check the radius. We check the intonation again, which we've done. We're now going to move on to a nut slot. That is the reason I set this at 2 mil and that at 1.75. Once we've cut the nut slots, we're going to lower these down to 1.75 this side and 1.5 mil that side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get ourselves a 942 set of nut slot files, which I have a set here. My Hosco set. Can you read that? It says Hosco on there. This is the 11 set. It's the most expensive set there is. And it's brilliant. I see I have to snap the end off my 10 there, that's no problem. So here's my 13 and my 10. We're going to use 10 for a 9, we're going to use a 13 for an 11. We're going to use a 16 for a 16. Bear with me. There's a 16. Then we're going to look at the other strings. We're going to be a. I should have them here. A 32. A 42. And is that of one of 24? I think it is, you know. We're going to stick these and discard these others, but we're not using. And oh, there's the end of that, that file up. Oh, I don't come off one of my files here, snapped it. Never mind. No biggie. So let me check the gauge again. I want to have a set down here somewhere. About 42s, where are you? 942, 911, 16, 24, 32, 42. There you go. So 24, 32, 42, that's right. Uh, for a 9, we don't have a 9, we're going to use a 10. For an 11, we don't have an 11, we're going to use a 13. And for a 16, we're going to use a 16. So, again, we're going to need a feeler gauge. Now, with everything set correctly, we've got the right height of the 12 fret, we've got the radius set, we've got the intonation set, we've got the neck set. We are going to drop each of these to a certain height. And these are my heights, I don't know if they're right or wrong, but just heights I've always used. And how I like to gauge it is, this is measuring from the top of the first fret to the bottom of the string. On this side I like to go 0.3 millimeters, 0.28, 0.26, 0.24, 0.22, 0.2. We could go quite a lot lower low than that if we wanted to, but we're not setting up for a pro super low player. It's a standard setup. So we're going to take 0.3, Replace it on top of the fret and it's just buzzing, almost buzzing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the string, we're going to take the 42, which is this one. Now, these cut a perfect U shape or a perfect semicircle. That's the 42 there, as you can see. These are made of steel, they're absolutely brilliant. And we're going to take it, we're going to level with it, but we're not going to scooch into the frets because we just polish them. And we're just going to carve very gently, don't go mental, we only need to remove a little bit of material. Just gently carve in there. That's the correct width for the string. And there you go, check tune again, and we should now get a gentle buzz. That one is now set. This one we want at 12.28. So we're going to take a 0.25, and in fact we're going to start with 0.3. We've got some work to do with that yet, so we're going to clean this file. We'll put it away. We're going to take the 32, which corresponds to the 32 string. I'm going to try and get it out of its packet. We need a little bit more on this one, so we're going to bring that string over. And we're, again, we're going to do exactly the same, make sure we don't scratch into the frets. Can't see any dust there, so we may not have made a significant cut yet, but we'll keep checking. 
We've done something because it went lower. Still not making any noise on there, so that's a good sign. Maybe a little bit dull, so I'm going to give it, just give it a quick brush with a steel brush. Let's try the way around. Yeah, we're definitely cutting in something there. So these nuts are made of a, a substance called cyclovac. Man-made bone, basically. And we're there on that one, super duper. So the next one, a 24 string. I'm going to want down to about 0.26. Now, I don't have a 0.26, but I do have a 0.24, uh, 0.25. So we're going to go with that one. And once we start getting a gentle buzz on the 2.5, we're low enough. Here's a 25, so let's see where we are first. Fair way to go on that one yet. So we're going to take the 24 file. This should be sharp because I've not used this much over the years. So you get the idea. No buzz there. We're going to give that a wire brush in as well because they don't seem to be cutting that well. I don't know, I've not used this one much. They do get clogged up, so you do have to keep them clean. And seriously, guys, do not go mad at this because you will cut it too deep. And if you do it, you're replacing the knot. And to get that out and get a new one in, it takes a long time. And then you've got to carve it all again. Can see it's low enough. That's enough buzz for me. Like I said, this is 0.25. I want it 0.26. So the next one, I want it 0.24. That's quite a bit higher. So we are going to do 16 next. And this is going to give us a nice low action at the first fret, which is what we want, then we can check the action at the 12th fret again and possibly lower at the bridge again, or lower the saddles. So we're going to take the 16. And normally at this point I say I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll do it off camera, but today I'm not going to do that. So this is a 16, quite a bit thinner. And there's not lots of cut wider than we need to be. There you go. I can see I've cut well into that there, so... I already know that's low enough, I'm told by looking at it. I can go just a tad lower. And that say it's perfect. So the next one we're going to want about 0.22 so I want a good buzz on the 25. That's way high. Clearing the file. So this one's an 11. Now we could go in with a 10. I'm going to actually go in with a 13 because I already know that it's what Fender have done. So let me ju just change gauge again. We're going to go to 0 0.2 now. I 
that's nowhere near. So with this one, we're going to go in with the 13. Now the 13, I have in a Stumac holder because it stops it going on wibbly wobbly as the 13 and the 10 do. So we're just going to go in there and we're not going to go mental again. We're just going to carve in. I told you Fender have used a 13. How did I know that? Well, I just did, just do. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently with this one, because you go too deep, like I say, you put a new knot on there. And you really don't wanna be doing that. Very, very small movements there. And there you go, I know this is right. And that's perfect, I know it is. Beautiful stuff. And the last one, the nine, we're gonna hit it with the 10. Again, the 10 is in the Stumac holder because otherwise it just wibble wobbles. And don't go mental, nice and gentle. Not even cut into it, look. Not touched it. You do that when you'll scoot it too much, you'll go in, oh, I'll go a little bit harder, you go a little bit harder, and you've gone too deep. So I'm going to leave that there, wherever it is. And that is the nut slots cut. So that is the setup done. It's beautiful, I like that. Uh, my brush, my brush. So I can get these files away. So that is a nut slots cut. So we are, for all intents and purposes, finished. But we're just going to check some more things. Because even though we've done everything we need to do, it doesn't mean we are finished. It means we've done all we need to do. But we've not done final setup yet. So get this out of the way. Tools always out of the way. So we know we've got everything set, but we're going to measure again the height of the strings above the 12th fret because we don't know how much material we've removed from that knot. In some cases we've not removed anything. So chances are we're still a little bit too high. So let's measure this side. We are, oh no, we're just under 175 on that side. We're 15 on that side. So that's saying we are perfect. So that is really good news because it means we've not got to change anything. I'm just going to turn that one up just a little. 175 on the base side which is what I want and 1.5 on the treble side so we're going to two back in in the playing position everything will be sharp because it always is when you've tuned it laying down And that is how I set up a guitar. Right, we'll finalise this video in just a few minutes. We are, friends, we are all finished with this one. It is a Made in Mexico Fender Player Series Telecaster. It's got Fender 75 on the back, so that would make it to the 76th, 75th anniversary of Fender, would it? I'd have thought so. So what was wrong with it? Well, it played like an absolute swine when it came in. That was only because the setup wasn't right, but even worse than that were these edges of these frets. They ripped your fingers to pieces. 
And um, on first thinking it was just the edges overlapping, I thought no it's not that, it's the actual crown part of the, or what we call the bevel, the beveled edge. And they've not been filed over, they're just left rough and uh, as, as if they've been filed and not, not polished over. So what I've had to do is we taped up the fingerboard and I've profiled the bevels. And so you saw me do it with that small thin file, four or five strokes over each one, then sanding over them. Then what we've done is we've highly polished the frets with six grits of sandpaper uh, from 600 grit through to 2000 grit and finished off with some uh, super fine steel wool. Other things I've done, I've given an intensive setup, which consists of setting the right amount of relief in the neck, setting the action at the 12th fret. Once that's done, we set the radius um, on the bridge and then we do the intonation uh, and then cut the nut slots. Cutting the nut slots is the last thing I normally do. Uh, but you can cut the nut slots before you do the intonation. But we've checked everything. The intonation is now spot on. It was spot on anyway. So uh, Luke has helped me out there. He's done it himself. I also checked the pots to see if any were scratchy. They weren't. All the electrics are working fine. I've had this plugged in and played. I played it before I did the setup and it played like an absolute bag. It was horrible. But now we set the radius, set the intonation, set the neck, cut the nut slots and finish off the frets. This plays as sweet as butter. There's no reason why this cannot be a fan fabulous gigging guitar right now. So yeah, looks fantastic and now plays fantastic. So this one is done, it can go back to its owner. But before I go, I need to remind you of my website. Best place, Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash NG17. That's Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. Why is it forward slash NG17? Well, my postcode is NG17. And I'm a Nottingham lad, and 17 is a very special number in my life. So NG17 works for me. So one reminder, Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. I'm Victor. I am your fret friend. And until the next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.